to five minutes of footy. Tonight, I will be trying a pair of beers that was done in collaboration between Beavertown and Tuo. Um, again, the celebration of Beavertown's fourth birthday. So, um, figured I would unwind because I've been studying for my final, final, final finals um, with some, hopefully, what I've heard to be stellar beers. So anyhow, they come in this uh, box, a uh, very nice gift box of sorts, um, and uh, you have Dr. Jekyll, which is supposedly supposed to be a tart muscat, barrel aged wet, gooseberry Belgian pale at 8.1%, and then uh, Mr. Hyde, which is a chocolate imperial stout coming in at 1 point, oh, one point, <laughs> coming in at 13.7%, it's 1.3%. Exam going for you. On the back, it tells you all about um, beers. So, uh, let's go on here. I'll explain them in a second. So, here, here they are. Got some pretty cool artwork in here. So, obviously, we'll start with Dr. Jackdaw because he is you know, the original kind man before he became. Crazy, the opposite side. So um, that is Dr. Jekyll. Mm. Looks a bit nuts in here too. But so this is the um, Muscat Barrel Aged Brett and Gooseberry Belgian Pale at 8.1 percent. And we will open that up. Let's try it. Uh, so they have it. It's, it's a nice, very nice golden color. Um, good, nice medium head. It's got a nice, fruity but very like soury smell to it as well. Um, citrus, berry. It's nice and smooth. Um, It's definitely sour, but it's not um, it's not pungent or tulip grown sour. I don't know what gooseberry tastes like, but it tastes pretty good to me. It's got a light fruity flavor to it, but a citrus backbone. Some bitterness. It's a bit of carbonation. Um, it's really nice. A little bit too easy drinking for 8.1% though. So this one says that um, the whole point behind this was that they were going to use um, the same wort for both beers. And so what they did was Dr. Jekyll, smooth, gentle mannered character, which he is. 8.1%, he's very easy to drink. And then a tiny bit of the double bubbling underneath. So they used a pale base wort, and then they fermented it with um, a Scottish yeast strain. Apparently they used, used it in hide as well. Um, and then it was taken apart and refined. And then they barreled it with brett, fresh sour green ditches, I have to look that up. I don't know what green ditches is. Founded by lacto, gooseberries, and summer spent in muscat. So, that's what that is. And it's, it's really tasty. Um, I'm not huge into like sour beers, but this is really, really nice, smooth, easy to drink. Be a nice summery beer, especially for the weather we're having right now. Then we have a lovely Mr. Hyde that is the evil version of Jackal. So. so they both look kind of evil. But anyhow, uh, yeah. And that's a Scotch barrel aged Imperial Stout. 
um, at 13.7%. Let's get into the outstanding artwork. Um, so, I wonder who, what, I wonder if Beavertown Dwyer did the artwork or if it was Cindy O'Toole. Tate was probably Dwyer, but the lads were over here from Beavertown. Sometime, I think, in March. Um, they were pretty funny. Very, very nice guys. Um, they might have some bestiality problems. They ravaged a bear while they were here. The bear is now in counseling. Um, so I would keep all of your large animals away from them. Just be safe. Anyhow, this is Mr. Hyde. Um, there is no carbonation, or actually very light carbonation to speak of. It's kind of sticking to the glass, but it's very light carbonation on this puppy. Um, so, just a note. 13.7%. It's got an extremely rich chocolatey nose. Rich um, milk chocolate more than a dark chocolate. I'm not really getting any whiskey off of it. Uh, maybe a slight hint. Not much. Very roasty. Very slight mochaness. But mostly just full on chocolate. It's very. It's a whole lot of chocolate to that. Oh well. <laughs> if you wait, it then hits you with a slight kick of whiskey at the back. Ow. So it kicks you in the face. Some whiskey at the back end. But up front it's like drinking drinking chocolate. To be honest, this is actually like drinking chocolate. This is full on chocolate in my opinion. Um, it's a nice light. Well, not light, but it's a nice, deep, mellow chocolate. It's not like you know, syrup or anything, but it's full-on chocolate, in my opinion. And then, yeah, you get a warmth and um, a very whiskey finish to it. But I'd be interested to hear what kind of barrels they used, because this is not a peated whiskey barrel. This is definitely from... One of the areas of Scotland with non peat whiskey. Wow, that's got. <laughs> it's like. It's like they just put whiskey inside of it almost. The, with the actual, like, kick of whiskey at the back. So they say for Hyde. Dark, dark vulgar, unstoppable beast. In the same pale wort, and then fermented separately with the Scottish strain of yeast. Um, and then they transformed hide into an imperial stout with the addition of a strawed elixir brewed from smoked and roasted dark malts. Molasses, which I can see they definitely have molasses in there. Hops. Spiked with sea salt. Not sure yet. I can see some sea salt in there. It's a bit salty. And sentenced to languish in space hide whiskey casks. A lot of uh, space hide whiskey is unimpeded, so that makes sense then. So they are very different beasts, I'd have to say. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Um, I would like more carbonation, I definitely would say, in Mr. Hyde. He's lacking a bit of head. Um, he can't get it up. That's a problem, in my opinion. Um, but... Dr. Jekyll, he, he's got a, he had a good amount of head when he began, and uh, if you please. Um, so, uh, so that was uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. The bottles were limited, um, and I think they're definitely worth a try, in my opinion. I enjoyed them. Um, maybe 
my bottle of hide was just a one-off, not, car not as carbonated bottle, which definitely can happen, so. Still, it's nice to drink, so. That's it for me. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Cheers, up.